readings and blessings. We connect, resolved and focused on our New Year's journey and its fit into God's plan. And so in this broadcast, we offer soul deep concerns and bring deep felt rejoicing to his heavenly altar as we lift up the following prayers. For my family in Israel, please keep them safe and sane. For all who are dealing with the impacts of politics and terrorism, help me to not feel so angry and to find more peace in my life. God, give strength to a friend who's trying to leave an abusive relationship. Help our country and give grace to those elected and enlisted to protect it. God, be with my family as they deal with frozen pipes. Strengthen my home as we deal with my parents' divorce. Send healing for my granddaughter's health issues. God, grant peace and strength to those dealing with terminal illness. Help me to not forget the blessings in my life. For my sister, as she battles effects of cancer, please uh, let me get along with my roommates this semester. Grant me the focus and better time management to do well in school. Please give me continued patience as I deal with my family and the election drama. Jesus, help me to get over my loneliness and depression for healing for teammates already dealing with injuries. Grant grace and strength to those impacted by war in Ukraine. Give hope to all those dealing with recent cold weather problems. God, grant cheer and healing to a friend who just lost her baby. For my boyfriend as he works out some things. Christ, give patience and hope to families of those dealing with mental health issues. May the world be less angry and divided in this new year. Triune God, hear the prayers of our blended community and those intentions only fully known in the depths of our individuals' hearts. Grant us all your pardon, your passion, and the gift of your peace. Be with and direct us in the new year and help us to blend the joy of your eternal promise with the fun of spiritual practices to give tangible hope to a road-weary, rage-weary world. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Greetings and welcome to Ottawa University's Martin Meditation Chapel, where we're broadcasting again after having a lot of cancellations due to weather here in Kansas. We're back. They're banging drums in one room. They're doing class in another. Campus is crazy. It seems like a virtual heat wave here in Kansas because it's 36 degrees. And we have just come from this bizarre sub-zero spell, about 10 days, where the wind chill was crazy, like 30 below. And Wisconsin, where you're used to it, we are not used to that as in Kansas. At least we haven't been for a long time. Arizona, you can only imagine. My good friend Zelda there would tell me how beautiful it was when she was emailing me, and I've been very jealous. But today is a different day. The slush is slush again. It's not ice. Campus is again humming and busy. The parking spaces here in Kansas were hard to find, and it feels much more like normal. Normal is an interesting issue. The, the note that I got from a student, and I think this must have come in when we were doing our stuff on Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service, but it had to do with how do I prioritize what God wants me to do? Well, <laughs> How do you prioritize that in itself is, is tough, but, but I would say in general. So one of the things that I, we talked last semester about being a good mirror holder for God, and we talked about that Trinity, that triune God, the consubstantial God, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so what I can share with you, and again, because I don't have any universal answer for this, but I can sure share how I do it. For me, I think about... God having many mansions in, in the village that, that God controls and that we each have a house there, a mansion there. And so from a God perspective, I expect to be a part of that village. I expect to sort of share the community of people in that village, not all of whom might be Christian any more than anybody in my town is homogenous, but, but sort of a mix of those things. Secondly, I think from, from Jesus, we're all body parts of Christ. So I expect to work with people that 
our armpits or other undesirable body parts that are necessary as we do the kind of work that God requires. And I believe that the Holy Spirit can live in all of us, in any of us, if we constantly try to practice love, that great commission, the, the breathing of the Holy Spirit. So as long as we're not toxic, as long as we really work to love and not hate, as long as we don't have to worry about those issues of bringing our gift to the altar, we really then have the ability to hold that mirror for God and to work then on our prioritization. And that's interesting. So how does that work then with priorities? Well, that's interesting. We talked last time about influence and concern. We said that influence was one of those things that you just worry about, but at the end of the day, the best you can probably do is just let go and let God. Ugh. I have a lot of worry right now in the Middle East, and, and even more worry right now because my kids are there in Israel. So I worry a lot, and I pray a lot. Now, if I wanted to change that influence to concern, I'd get on a plane too and go join my kids. But... I'm not there. I'm in influence. So I have to pray and then let go and let God and trust that he will be there and that his plan is there and my kids will be safe. It's my two boys, my daughter-in-law. They're there trying to help refugees. Okay, well, I pray a lot. In that realm of influence and concern, then how do you know? Well, at the end of the day, if you really say that your influence your influence is what matters, not just praying and let go and let God. You really have to be able to ask an interesting question. Does it matter enough that you give care? Does it matter enough that you give care? And care in this classical issue is time, talent, or treasure. So if it matters enough that you give care, you need to give your time. Give your time. And in that priority issue then, that cuts into the time that you have for school or for work or for family, and now you're giving time. Talent can be whatever you're great at. Sometimes it's stuff you're not that great at, but you feel God compels you and calls you to do. Treasure, people think about money, and it certainly can be money, but maybe you're really good at websites, or maybe you're, it's whatever those gifts you have to bring to bear. And that's the difference then that says you, you sort of have skin in the game that you're willing then to go from concern to influence. And with God's grace, which is incredibly important, but with your skin in the game, with your ability to say, this is going to cost me something, you make those proofs. Yeah. In Chapel Day, you'll hear, I always think it's interesting, it doesn't mean we're perfect. David had a lot of good strengths, but he also had some real human weaknesses. That's it. And you'll hear in Mark, one of those passages that always sort of got me where Mary and so family is there to see Jesus and Jesus sort of doesn't answer the door and says, you know what? Family is there. We talked about a question last semester where it said blood is thicker than water. And remember, as we explain that, the full saying is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. The people can connect more in faith, in war and all those things than they even connect with their family. And this is this illustration where Jesus says that, but still... If you're the family knocking at the door, it must be a really rough feel to have someone not let you in and say, you guys are my family, while family's knocking. Those are the costs and the cost value worth of having skin in the game. The cost of making things matter, the cost of giving your time, talent, and treasure is that many times someone else has to suffer or at least go without so in some ways, the reason we pray hard to figure out when we let go and let God is we really want to make sure that God is saying that we take this from mom or dad or kid or friend and give it to stranger, even in a Sermon on the Mount way, if they're in prison or naked. or But if that food comes from somebody else's plate, you want to make sure you're doing what God requires and not just what you think about doing in the moment. That's where we are on this warmer but still cold day. Listen to some scripture. We'll try to figure out how that charge impacts us for this new year. And then we'll work together to see if we can bring warmth to the world. As God warms up the earth, let us try to warm up the hearts that we see in this political season. Thanks again for joining us. We're always glad you're here. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. 
Moreover, yesterday also, and the day before, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that did lead out and bring in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be prince over Israel. The ancients of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David to be king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned three and thirty years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and all the men that were with him went to Jerusalem to the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, and they said to David, Thou shalt not come in hither unless thou take away the blind and the lame that say, David shall not come in hither. But David took the castle of Sion, the same in the city of David. And his mothers and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers, for whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. So, in thinking then, reflecting on how we prioritize things, understanding that, like David, a lot of people may demand for us to do this, that, or the other, and we maybe can deliver. We probably are not perfect. And understanding that the cost of that might mean that those that we care for, those that we love, have some of their care reduced so that we can give that care to a project 
as it changes from our circle of concern to influence, as we give it time, talent, and treasure. <sighs> Certainly, we do it for God. People do it for country. People do it for a lot of things. But what I would say in my mind, it's sort of the difference between fate and destiny. Now, fate says that someday somebody will find the cure for cancer. Mm. Destiny says that that somebody will be you. David says, David is the king. David says, I'm not the king. I mean, initially there's a whole piece with David saying, what? I am a shepherd boy. David is the king. That is David's destiny. And part of that is his destiny because he seizes it. And in seizing that destiny, it doesn't make him perfect, but it makes him fit the job. It makes the job matter. So I think about that a lot because of the snow, because of the people that we count on to be our first responders and things. We just did a nice thing for Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Caring, where in that day of service piece, we made candy bags, not healthy food, but candy bags, for the people that were driving the snow plows here in Kansas to get us around. We've had a ton of snow and a ton of ice. There's been plows going off the road. Yet those people, while we were canceled here at school and didn't have to come into the campus, those people were out in it, doing it, so that people could get there. So you have those people. You have the people that, that take the 911 call, those people that dispatch, that are there, that are there even when it's bad. They find a way with technology or getting there to make sure that they can take the call, to dispatch the ambulance to the people that need it. You have the people in the ambulance who are there to make sure that they can help. At the end of the day, the snow day doesn't matter to them. It means they have to get to work. With COVID, we had those people that were essential, the people that had to go to work because you counted on them being at work so you could be taken care of or so you could get things done. You counted on the doctors and the nurses to be there in the hospital. If it was an elective surgery, if it was required, or if you, you counted on that. The ambulance people that were required would take you to the hospital where the doctors and the nurses that were required would all that. Those are people that have an incredibly strong sense of the destiny of what they must do. They can't call in sick when there's no one else. They are the people that respond to the call and say, here I am, I'm here to do your will. Even on a snow day, even during COVID, even. Now, not everybody has to be that. It has to be a real personal call. You have to do more than just pray for them. If you really think that in that realm of influence and concern, you're going to be one. You move from concern, pray for, let go, let God, to influence that says, I will go. I will go and be a dispatcher. I will go and be an EMT. I will go and be a nurse. And a lot of those professions, those are people that get some training here at the school. That's part of some of what we do in health services. But we can teach you how to do stuff. But that connection between God, society, duty, destiny, that's very, very personal. And that is probably the most important thing that we have to reflect on when we set our priorities. Because that really does cut into issues. If you are that first responder, a fireman or, or a nurse, your kids might be there without you and need a fireman or a nurse. You are trusting the fabric of how we work in the village that concept that we talked about in the many mansions of the village of God that says that your kids will have shoes and have food and will have someone to attend to them while you're out attending to other people's kids. That is real trust in God's plan and in the fellow body parts of Christ. And that's hard. Your priorities then are set in juggling to make sure that if you are there to respond to someone's needs, someone will be there to respond to the needs of those you love when you're not there. Those are hard things to get off the camel to get through that eye of the needle for all of us. Because it requires a huge amount of trust, not only in God's plan, but in your fellow whatever, fellow villagers, fellow Christians, fellow humans. 
And right now, as we heard some last week in our notes, because politics is dicey and it's hard sometimes to trust people when you don't always like them. It's hard to love them because we are body parts of Christ and not like them. But all that's real. When do you decide not to take the vocation or do what takes the time because the priority is too hard? Because in the realm of cost, value, and worth, it costs too much to make it worth it. That's a really strong prayer conversation with God. I am so grateful that people are first responders, that people are essential employees. Our our world would not work without that. I am so fearful right now that my kids are in Jerusalem, which is better than other places, but are there trying to make a difference. And I worry, and all I can do is pray. And they could be hurt, and I know that. But they feel that they are called to do it. I am grateful that people respond to that call. I don't know what my charge is to any of us except to say that it's important this year that we find our call. No matter how hard or dark or crabby or political the dialogue is on the Internet. Because without that, without people with snow plows and just next door neighbors with snow shovels who instead of staying in and drinking cocoa come and help their neighbors that can't get their their stuff shoveled, the world is not just a less kind place. It's not a practical place. It's impossible to navigate. So we have to look for those opportunities, even if they're just one time. Or for those vocations, if that's what we want to do, because that is the clearest way that God's plan can take place on earth. Let's close then in prayer. God, we've had the eureka of finding snow shovels. We've had the epiphany of using it. And now we have a whole year to find other things to do to help brothers and sisters, friends and not friends, strangers and family to have a better quality of life, a better quality of life together, a better amount of harmony in being body parts of Christ. Help us find ways to prioritize how we can aid and assist that in really busy lives. Help us find ways that we can stomach down the bile that comes from the diatribe and anger that we hear on news or politics so that we still can roll up our sleeves and help those in need, even if they aren't people that agree with anything that we say or do, or vice versa. Help us to still take care of what is needed to be done in their lives, in the lives of the village, because we know that that's what you call us to do. And maybe most importantly, as we examine our lives, help us to determine those areas where you are saying that we are urgent, critical, necessary, where we are the people that have to respond to our destiny, not fate, where we are called to be the people that really deliver that solution. And a whole generation where we know that you have someone who's going to deliver that solution, if we are the Davids, even if we don't feel worthy or ready, help us to be able to say, here I am and solve And for those that love us, for our friends and family, if we are those Davids, help us to understand and to empathize as there are times when we are not there for them and make sure that someone else is. So in those times where we're helping other people, those that we love don't go without just because they love someone who's trying to do your work. We live in daunting times. But we have an awesome God. Help us to find ways to do your awesome work so the times are less daunting and so that the world is more full of love. We ask this in the now and ever. Amen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in 
God is in our land And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love And they'll know we are Christians by our love oh, We will work with each other, we will work side by side We will work with each other, we will work side by side and we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are Christians by our love all praise to the Father from whom all things come and all praise to Christ Jesus 